If you actually imagine a hunter-gatherer was born with low dopamine levels, so for whatever reason they had low dopamine production in their brain, they would get to, say, 10 years old, and they'd be asked to contribute to that group in some way, like help us find the food, help us build the shelter. Those are dopamine-type experiences, hunting food, building shelter, contributing to the group in some way. That individual, let's call him Sam, has low dopamine, and he goes out hunting for the first time. And he actually is going to experience more of a dopamine elevation than everyone else in that group because he's coming from a lower number. Like if they were all coming from 5 out of 10 and jumping to 10 out of 10, but he was coming from 1, he's jumping 10 points when he's doing that hunting. And he is going to feel insanely good in that pursuit of that goal. So then he's going to come home and think, wow, I love hunting. I'm going to do loads of hunting. And those with ADHD wouldn't have actually been the ones that were struggling to contribute. They actually likely would have been the greatest contributors and high performers in the group. And you do see a very strong relationship between ADHD and high performance because effectively if you are someone with ADHD you have more dopamine seeking within your brain because you're coming from lower so you get bigger elevation. 